Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My sister's unemployed boyfriend moved in without asking. Confronting his parents revealed a truth I never expected. One day I came home from work and found him sitting on our couch watching TV. My sister introduced him as her new live-in partner. I was shocked and angry. How could you do this without even asking me first? I shouted at my sister. You know we're supposed to be sharing this apartment and you just can't make that kind of decision without consulting me. My sister was taken aback by my outburst. She replied that she thought it was the right decision for them and that she didn't think it was a big deal since he was already spending so much time at our place. I was furious and felt like she was completely disregarding my feelings. The first few weeks were a nightmare. I had to deal with her boyfriend being around all the time. He was lazy, rude, and completely ungrateful for everything my sister and I did for him. He never even offered to help with the rent or the bills. I couldn't stand it anymore. One day, I decided to take matters into my own hands. I paid a surprise visit to his parents and told them about their freeloader son. I explained how he had no job, no ambitions, and plans for the future. I told them that he was mooching off my sister and me and that I couldn't support him any longer. To my surprise, his parents didn't react the way I expected them to. They were a middle-aged couple and the mother had tears in her eyes as I spoke. They invited me to sit down and talk and I could tell they were genuinely concerned for their son. They explained that they had been trying to help him but had struggled to get through to him. They told me that he had been struggling with depression and had lost his job and his sense of purpose. They had been supporting him financially for months and were worried about his mental health. They didn't want to enable him, but they also didn't want him to be homeless either. After I left, his parents came over and sat him down for a heart-to-heart -heart talk. They expressed their concern for him and told him that he needed to take responsibility for his life. They explained that they loved him but could not continue to support him indefinitely. They encouraged him to find a job, pursue his passions, and take steps towards independence. At first, he was defensive and resistant to their advice. He insisted that he was trying his best and that everyone was against him. But over time, he started to reflect on their words. He realized that he had been taking advantage of my sister and me and that he needed to change his behavior. He also realized that he had been wallowing in self-pity and needed to take proactive steps towards improving his situation. After that incident, my sister and I had a talk. I told her how I felt about her boyfriend, and she listened. She admitted that she had been naive and had underestimated the impact of her boyfriend's behavior on me. She also said that she had been blinded by her feelings for him and hadn't seen the full picture. We agreed that he would have to start contributing to the household if he wanted to stay. At first, he was hesitant to change. He continued to be lazy and unhelpful, and I started to lose hope that he would ever change. But over time, I noticed a slow but progressive change in his behavior. He started to clean up after himself, cook meals for us, and offered to run errands. He even got a part-time job and started paying his share of the rent and bills. I was surprised by his behavior change, but I was still skeptical. However, he proved me wrong and I slowly started to see him in a different light. He became more respectful towards me and I could see that he was genuinely trying to be a better person. He even apologized for his behavior in the past and thanked me for opening his eyes. As time passed, our apartment started to feel like home again. My sister's boyfriend had become an active member of the household and we started to have fun times together. We would cook meals, watch movies, and go out on weekend trips. The whole experience had been difficult. I had learned to be more patient and understanding and my sister had learned to be more considerate of other people's feelings. Despite some initial progress, my sister's boyfriend had a long way to go before he won over our parents. They had come over for a few days to stay with us. Even after he had started to clean up after himself and look for a job, they still judged him harshly and refused to approve of him. The worst of it came from our father who seemed to take pleasure in belittling and mocking him at every opportunity. He would make snide comments about his clothes, his appearance, and his character, not even trying to hide his disdain. It was painful to watch and I felt embarrassed for my sister and her boyfriend. I could see the hurt in their eyes every time my father said something mean and I knew that it was only making things worse. I tried to talk to my father and explain why he should give her boyfriend a chance, but he was stubborn and refused to listen. He said that he knew the type of person my sister's boyfriend was and that he would never be good enough for our family. As the days went on, the tension in our household grew. My sister and her boyfriend were trying their best to prove themselves, but they seemed to be fighting and losing battle. Every time they did something wrong or made a mistake, our father would pounce on them, using it as an opportunity to criticize and berate them. It was a toxic environment, and I knew that something had to be done. I decided to intervene and have a talk with my father, hoping to get him to see reason and change his ways. It was not an easy conversation. My father was stubborn and set in his ways, but I persevered. I reminded him that our family was supposed to be there for each other, no matter what, and that we should be supporting our sister and her boyfriend through their struggles, not tearing them down. It took a while, but eventually my father started to come around. By the time they were about to leave, he began to see that his behavior was hurtful and unnecessary, and he made a genuine effort to be more supportive and kind. It wasn't a perfect ending and there were still moments of tension and conflict, but overall things started to improve. My sister and her boyfriend were able to relax a little, 
knowing that they had our support and my father was able to see that the capable of changing. I totally support OP's decision to pay a surprise visit to the boyfriend's parents. It was a bold move but it seems like it really made a difference and got him to start taking responsibility for himself. I don't really think it was OP's responsibility to deal with the boyfriend's behavior. It's really up to the sister to figure out how to handle her own relationship. I think the way the father treated the boyfriend was really harsh and unfair. I know he had been causing problems before, but it seemed like he was generally trying to turn things around. It didn't seem right to judge him so harshly. I don't think it's fair to pull all the blame on OP for not dealing with the boyfriend's behavior. It's not her responsibility to manage someone else's relationship or hold someone else accountable for their actions. It's up to the sister and her boyfriend to work things out themselves. I mean, it's not like OP was his mother or anything. It's not fair for anyone to be put in the middle of that, especially when it's a situation that could easily become very emotionally charged. I have to admit I had some serious concerns about the sister's choice of boyfriend from the start. It seemed like he was just taking advantage of her and not showing any interest in being a responsible partner. I mean, he didn't even have a job. It's hard to see someone you care about get involved with someone who doesn't seem to have their best interests at heart. Next story. My in-laws blame me for everything after my husband died. Leaving their house wasn't just for my son, it saved my sanity. I'm 34 female. My husband, 37 male, passed away last year. Sudden death. No illness. And I didn't have a place of my own. I stayed with my in-laws thinking that they'd lost their son and being with their grandchild, 5 male, would help them while grieving. My original plan was to stay until a year passed by since his death and I tied up some loose ends as far as my husband's debt was concerned. In the meantime, my in-laws kept escalating their complaints against me. That I didn't wake up early. I have to commute 75 to 90 minutes to my workplace. And I wake up by 6.30 to 7 a.m. That I didn't take care of my son. I'm now a single parent and I cannot be with him through the day since I have to work. That I don't do all the housework. I take care of the laundry. Look after my son when I'm at home. Includes keeping on top of his school schedule. Take him out to activities weekly. Read with him. Clean every day and help with cooking whenever I'm home. Last week things escalated. I visited my parents with my son every other weekend, and my in-laws kept saying he always fell sick whenever he came back to their in-laws' place, and that he keeps losing weight whenever he visits my parents. Now he's a five-year-old who is back in school after two years of a pandemic. He gets a cold twice a month, a mild temp every three, four months. He has some genetic allergies, and that is all being addressed with his doctors. His weight, according to his doctors, is perfectly within range and he has met all his developmental goals on time if not earlier. After last week's visit over the new year, they started singing the same tune. I texted my parents and told them I don't want to be there anymore. I packed up a few necessities, took my son, and left for my parents. I'm looking for a place of my own near my folks and hope to move into a house soon. The in-laws are now calling me and my parents to yell at us to call me a bad mom, to say I'm selfish at Kark. Ita? Edit, I see a lot of comments on grandparents' rights, Sep sets her. This isn't the U.S. and the law here favors biological parents, unless the situation is extremely concerning. But yes, I understand what y'all are saying. I have all my son's medical records, evidences of my good, while well, half-decent, I guess, parenting, and other such things. I also think their behavior is more to do with their grief than any devious scheme to take my son away from me, although that may be my naivety. Tell her that she does not get to make decisions about your child. You are the mother, not her. And if she can't respect you in your position as mother, she will not see your son for a very long time. Okay, it sounds like you will need to build up an evidence book at this point. If they continue harassing you or stalk you or anything else, you'll need to press charges against them for it and request a restraining order. Keep all the messages and calls on the log and voicemails and print them out. Gather your son's medical records from the pediatrician and deliver records from the hospital as well as the dentist if applicable. If you have been going to therapy since the death of your husband, get your records. Also get bank statements and health insurance records along with a letter of employment from work. If she is wanting to make all decisions for your child, she will definitely try to make trouble for you. She might call CEPs or the police and file false reports about you being on drugs or alcohol, abusing him, not taking care of him properly, starving him, being suicidal at sex. You need to be prepared to show that her claims are patently false. Do some research on grandparents' rights in your state. And I, I'm so sorry for your loss, and I'm sorry for the inexcusable behavior of your in-laws. I realize that they're grieving the loss of their son, but that doesn't give them a free pass to take it out on you and treat you the way they have. You did the right thing by leaving. You and your son deserve a safe place to call home to figure things out and to be able to work through your grief process. Also, based on their accusations and past behavior, I would be very concerned about what they might do in the future. They strike me as a type of people who might try to sue for grandparents' rights or custody out of spite, grief, anger, or in a desperate attempt to hang on to the memory of their son by trying to take yours. It wouldn't hurt to speak with an attorney to protect both you and your son. Keep track of everything.
Their emails, texts, VMs, or any other kind of communication, especially those with threats and accusations. Write down dates, times, and locations. Keep copies of your son's medical records to show that he's in good health should they file claims with authorities. I truly hope I'm wrong, and this never happens, but if it does, you can be prepared and ready for whatever may happen. NT, they are dealing with their grief, or maybe with being overwhelmed by responsibility for a five-year-old by lashing out at you. Sounds like you moving out is best for everyone, especially if they keep complaining that you aren't pulling your weight. In a worst-case scenario, they are actively trying to take custody of your son from you. That commute is really long with a young kid, though. That's three hours commuting every day. I can see why they might have complained that you never saw your son. Maybe it's better to move close to your work and get a babysitter to cover the afternoon hours. I'm so sorry for your loss and for how much you have to bear right now, OP. Edit the more I think about this, the more what they complain about makes no sense. They complain that you aren't around your son enough, but then complain when you take him to your parents for the weekend and they claim he comes back having lost weight. After one weekend? Who loses weight after just one weekend? And all kids are sick right now. That's a ridiculous thing to pin on the one weekend when he's out of their control. It really does sound like they're trying to build a case that you are neglectful and that they are the only ones taking care of him. The best thing you can do right now is limit contact with them and insist on being present for any visits you allow. Then it will be clear that he is doing just fine because of your care and hopefully they will have no legal leg to stand on. Next story, my dream trip to Italy with my mom was set until my sister wanted in without paying. Now I'm stuck between family and my savings. For my mother's birthday this upcoming August, I, 25 female, planned to pay for her and I to take a trip to Italy in September. When I first made these plans in summer of 2022, I spoke with my sister, 23 female, and asked if she wanted to come and she said she can't because she cannot afford it, which is totally understandable as she still lives at home with mom and works in a food retailer of sorts. I moved out in 2020 and started saving for this Italy trip after speaking with my sister. All seemed well and my mom was excited to go since it was a trip for her to a destination she always wanted to visit. Cut to now. I've been making steady plans of what will we do in Italy each day, and of course the overall cost. I was going to pay for my mom's ticket and mine as well as our hotel for the entirety of the trip. I'd also like to pay for some dinners and fun stuff while in the country. My mom wanted to bring fun money for herself to get whatever she wanted as well. However, now my mom has been talking about how my sister is upset that we are going without her and that she wants to go. I get that. I do, and if I were in her shoes, I'd feel the same way, but her financial situation hasn't changed, so mom was saying she and I could split the cost for my sister to come with us. This is an absolute no to me because according to my savings plan, I should have enough for just mom and I for the plane, hotel, food, train, and an emergency. I do not have spare money to pay for my sister as well. My mom is also not doing well financially. A big reason I wanted to pay for something so extravagant for her since she likely could never afford to go. So her paying half for my sister to come was unfair in my opinion. None of us are rolling in money. We're all struggling, but I planned for just two people to go to Italy and saved as such. I don't think it's fair for my sister to start complaining about wanting to go now without paying her way 100%. She isn't giving any money towards the trip for mom since it's mom's gift. So the least she can do is pay her own way at this point. This was supposed to be a gift for my mom and I already asked my sister if she wanted to could contribute when I first started planning this and she couldn't and. I respected that. I haven't bought off flights yet. Waiting until March so I wanted to know if I was really being unreasonable wanting to spend an extra thousand dollars or so for my sister to come with us when it would be dipping into my already low savings and wasn't part of my budget plan from the get-go. Please let me know because my mom is really upset with me and I feel like my sister is ruining something that was supposed to be a dream for her. Edit a lot of you are making this a big deal and telling me to cancel the trip, which I guess based on the post alone, without reading comments, knowing more is totally fair. It's not that big a deal that I'd take away this experience from my mom for being worried my sister wants to come and can't. The world isn't as black and white as that, unfortunately. Edit too. I've texted my sister and surprisingly she said she didn't want to go. I planned to speak with her in person about this, but she said via text that mom had taken something she said during the holidays out of context and thought she wanted to go when she doesn't. I asked if she would be down to plan a separate trip with the three of us somewhere in 2020. She was down. So all is well and Italy is on. NT, I say this to your mom. Sister is welcome to come with us, but I cannot afford to cover any part of her expenses. If her not being able to afford to come with us is going to ruin the trip for you, please tell me now while I can still cancel before I start booking things. I completely understand if you would prefer to wait until we all can afford to go. However, if you are okay with going without sister, then I need you to stop bringing up the idea of me helping to pay for her to come. I'm trying to plan an exciting trip for us and I don't want to feel guilty every time we discuss it. This is the answer. We had the same situation in our family over a trip to Ireland. Basically, I said, let's postpone if we all want to go until can afford it and save for it themselves. Even though we had already been in the plans for a year so there had been time to save if he was careful. He basically said in the end he wouldn't be able to save, not that he couldn't. He wouldn't, 
and we should go ahead. I told them they could do their own trip together in the future. Ireland ended up being a special trip and I loved spoiling my dad with this gift. It's been 10 years and I'm still waiting for my brother to do the same. It will never happen. I'm glad we went ahead anyway. NTA, your sister, is putting unfair pressure on you and your mom. Your mom is putting unfair pressure on you. If the trip had been a priority for your sister, she could have taken on a second job or found some way to make it a priority. Likewise, if treating your sister was that high of a priority for your mom, your mom could have taken on that second job. All they had to pay for was your sister's ticket and on-site expenses. Never allow another adult's vacation, education, sobriety, marriage, health, finances, or any other thing an adult ought to manage to be more important to you than it is to them. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.